Okay. I am delighted and um, honored to have um, my friend and um, a fellow associate with the Tucko History Committee, Nicholas Zanzano here. Uh, Nick is our digital archivist and historic researcher and presenter for the Tucko History Committee. He has done countless presentations on Tucko history, um, but most importantly, what he has done is really digitized um, a fantastic array of uh, compilation of photos and details and research of Tucko history. And you're going to get to enjoy some of that today. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand the program over to Nick for him to share. Great, thank, thank, you. thank you, Elaine. Um, I think this is going to be uh, a very, very interesting program. But before I even start, I'd like to thank uh, all the history lovers for attending uh, this program. The photos are all from the Tuckahoe History Archives and are a compilation of Phil and Alice White and the Tuckahoe History Committee's archives. Uh, the archives are extensive. I don't. I never dreamed that this much uh, information is in the archives here. Once I got started, I only went for one picture and I've been there for six years now. Uh, this program is the first of a series of works uh, that are in progress. And we're gonna show various locations throughout Tuckahoe from today, going back probably to the mid to late 1800s. Uh, the pictures are fascinating. You're going to see parking meters today and horse hitching posts uh, in the earlier uh, photos. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Marge Pellegrino. Uh, Marge has been instrumental with the Facebook site, the Tucko History Committee Facebook site. And I think we're probably up around 140,000 views very, very uh, great to see these many people showing an interest in it's Tuckahoe. It's amazing, amazing. It's, it's what's pushing me to do this work. Um, I'll try to make it as interesting as possible. Without further ado, we're gonna, we're gonna start right now. Um, the uh, first picture the, uh, that you see on the screen that map that's shown is an illustrated map. It was all done by hand back in 1923. The map is so concise, beautifully done, and that's going to be a future program where I can take P I could take everybody for a walk through Tuckahoe in 1923. And by doing that, we can see the smaller depot square the Lyric Theater, and many other locations that are just fantastic. I'm going to put um, a laser pointer on. I, Elaine, is this uh, showing? Yeah, up? that's fine. Nick, I'm wondering, can that can that be um, in, uh, zoomed in a little bit, that picture? Just, I don't know if everybody can see what that is. Okay. I'm not sure if you can do it or not. Yeah, that's right. great. Perfect. By, by zooming in, you could see, uh, I, I can't, let's see. Now I can't use the laser pointer, but again, that map is gonna be a future program. And now I'm gonna go to the first slide. This first slide is the Bentley building. It's at the intersection of Main Street and Lake Avenue looking west. The building with the turret roof is the Bentley building which is still at that location. And the Bentley building today, I think everybody would recognize the Tuckahoe Station Cafe down at the bottom. Uh, this picture, what's interesting is uh, keep an eye for the next pictures. Uh, this picture, we show traffic lights, large open intersection. Uh, it, it wasn't always like this. Here we are with the same intersection, the same Bentley building. And this picture is circa 1950s. Uh, 
when you look at it, you'll notice that the traffic lights are gone. We have the smaller bridge going over the railroad. It was just two lanes back then. The uh, upper right-hand corner in the trees, you could see the, uh, uh, the old mill building. And on the right, you could see the beginning of stores. And the stores that are shown, be shown in the next picture, are a little clearer. But these stores are located in the parking lot at the intersection of Lake Avenue and Main Street. Oh, before I forget, um, the Bentley building, this was built back in uh, 1927. Adjacent to it, the building that's attached to it in the picture is Cornell's and it's Cornell's bro Cornell Brothers Hardware. And that was built in 1919. So we have a 1919 building, 1927 building. The bridge, the smaller bridge was built in 1911 and it was expanded to what we have today in 1999. Okay. I had to throw this picture in. This is a picture looking from the Bentley building. If you were at the door to the Bentley building looking towards Depot Square, What's great with this picture, it shows the, the two lane bridge. The, that's the original bridge that we had over the railroad. But what was great was we had a blinking light for uh, traffic, traffic signal at that location. Um, to the left, the series of buildings that I'm highlighting right now, all these, all these stores were in, are in the parking lot at uh, Growlers. And back then there was a whole series of stores and that's gonna be part of the uh, next uh, intersection. But there was a lot of businesses along here, Michael's Jewelers, uh, Danny's Luncheonette. Um, you'll, you'll see quite a few. For us old timers, we'll, we remember these like it was yesterday. Wish I had one of those cars. That's for sure. Here's another picture of the Bentley building and it's looking west. And what's great today, they're building a new building at this location. But back in the 1950s, this was an Esso station. And I thought this was such an iconic historic uh, picture. And what I loved with the Bentley building, and if you, if you walk by it today, you'll see a bracket up here, a bracket over here. And originally there was a sign for letting people know that you're in Tuckahoe. I wish we had the sign. Um, to the right, back in the 50s, this was uh, uh, Burr's Welcome. And Burr's Welcome began in Tuckahoe in 1924 and left in 1970. Uh, the old mill building, that's a restaurant now, is right in the back here in the trees. And the old mill building was built back in 1810. Now we have other pictures. Unfortunately, it's not in this uh, selection, but the bridge right next to the Esso station that goes over the Bronx River, it was called Bompo's Bridge and it's in maps from 1720. And so it's so historic with Bompo, Bomp, Bompo's Bridge and Main Street. And what people did was they came from Yonkers, they went up Main Street, they went up to Waverly Square and up to Route 22. And over there they can get a stagecoach and go to Boston or to New York City. And they did the same once the trolleys came in, right? Yeah, yeah, we're, get, we're gonna be uh, hitting the trolleys in a minute. Um, before, before the Bentley building was built, we had the Fisher building. The Fisher building was at that intersection and it was built around 1870. 
On the top floor, you could just make out Masonic Hall. This was the location where the Masonic Temple held their meetings from approximately 1886 to 1922. The building, this building was demolished in the mid 1920s and then the Bentley building was built in 1927. Just to the left, you could just make out a portion of a building. That's the original Cornell Brothers hardware store that was built in 1919. The Fisher building itself, again, was 1870. So um, it was a lot of change over the years in that uh, location. Now I'm going to show uh, a really great picture. Here we are with Hodgman rubber in the upper right. Right adjacent to it, we have the Fisher building. The street that we're looking at is Lake Avenue. And on Lake Avenue, we had the uh, Cornell Hardware. In the background, which I'm showing highlighted, is the uh, cotton mill. And uh, let's see, uh, Hodgman Rubber, it started in Tuckahoe. It was in Tuckahoe for 73 years and started in 1853. Now the building that you see is near completion, but it was the Hodgman Rubber building was built in segments. There were small portions of it that were built and it kept getting expanded. And Hodgman Rubber was one of the biggest uh, rubber manufacturing companies on the whole East Coast of the US. Pretty impressive for Little Tuckahoe. Here's a great picture of Cornell Hardware. And uh, again, Cornell's was built in 1919. Uh, and nineteen wonderful picture and yeah. Mary Fix is is on on the Zoom program so from Cornell's <laughs> ah okay I, I, I wish my husband John Junior was here to see we're this. taping it we're taping it Mary so yeah. oh good good I hope I hope you're enjoying the uh, photos I am I am uh, thank you but this is such a great photograph. Uh, the one picture I didn't put in here was Cornell Hardware had a, a major fire. I think it was after 1919 because the Bentley building to the it right was, was built. It was, it was in 1946. Okay, terrific. I'll pop that on here. And um, now we're going to go back even further in time. This picture oh, wow. is one of the oldest pictures we have in Tuckahoe. Uh, what's interesting with this picture is number one, the railroad wasn't lowered. It was at the grade level. Number two, the street that we're looking at is Main Street. The small general store that it's, I'm highlighting right now with the horse and carriage in front is the Duesenberry General Store. Um, this picture is approximately 1850. And if you look to the right, you could see the old mill, the old cotton mill building in the background. The Duesenberry General Store. And then to the left is the Duesenberry House. At this time, from researching with the maps, Lake Avenue, which goes across the front of the store and goes to the right, did not extend to the uh, Bronzeville part of Lake Avenue. That wasn't built yet. The Duesenberry House eventually gets moved and it gets moved to uh, uh, just opposite the Parkway Casino and, and has gone through some modifications over the years. The, Small area to the right that's fenced in is where the parking lot is today at Lake Avenue and Main Street. And at this time, this was part of the real estate that uh, the owner of Hodgman Rubber, his son owned a large home, a mansion in this area. And this is part of that mansion property. Um, 
when you look at this picture, Main Street, this is way before any trolleys. So back then it was all horse and carriage going through Tuckahoe. And I think that's so neat. Um, there was a proprietor on Main Street that said when he came to Tuckahoe in 1850 with his family, they worked in Hodgman rubber or they worked for Tuckahoe marble. And what he found really interesting, and he wrote in an article in one of the local papers back then, that at that, in the 1850s, Tuckahoe had sheep and cows and farms all around. And I think that's really cool. Uh, especially knowing Tuckahoe today. Now we're going to go to the next intersection. We did um, the Bentley building. And here, here, here we are across the street. This is the parking lot at Lake Avenue and Main Street. And you could see growlers over here on the, in the uh, background. Um, this picture is obviously a new one, but it's just to give everybody, especially the new people, a good perspective of where we are. Now we're gonna go back to a time that I enjoyed. Here's the same intersection, and here's a group of stores that I think all the old timers in Tuckahoe remember. Uh, the Maplewood Inn, uh, Sammy and Simon's Delicatessen, Frank's Cleaners, and there was, there's more stores. Uh, and over the years, obviously, they changed. Um, this is just another view of the stores. And uh, again, just to, to the right is Lake Avenue, and uh, Burr's Welcome is located there. So the, the bars and delicatessens and uh, luncheonettes and stores had plenty of business with the large volume of people that uh, worked there. Now we're going back the same intersection. This was the Maplewood. Let me just, here's the Maplewood bar. Now we're gonna go from the 1950s. We're gonna go back in time to 1907. Here's where the Maplewood bar was. And back then it was um, a clothing store. They had a bric-a-brac shop next door where you could buy just about anything. And if you look in the road, you could see the trolley tracks. This is Main Street. And again, where the stores are, that's where the parking lot is today at Lake Avenue and Main Street. Now, what I'm, do, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show the continuation to the stores going to the right. That's towards uh, the railroad and depot square. Here's the clothing store, the bric-a-brac shop. Then there was a barber shop, Charlie Singh's hand laundry. So there was a fair amount of stores. There, were, there was a lot of business back then in Tuckahoe. And due to the business with the Hodgman rubber and Burr's Welcome. Here's the next building going towards the railroad. And the upper floor of this was a boarding house at the time. Here we are with a meat market and Tommy's restaurant, which was an upper scale restaurant. When you look at the menu, um, he had everything from oysters onward. So it's a pretty interesting shop. The next building, here's, here's the, uh, boarding house. And if we go to the right, we had a real estate. Uh, this was Underhill Real Estate and Insurance, a plumbing outfit. Now the extreme right is where the railroad tracks are. And at this time, the railroad tracks were at the grade level. And if you look in the background, this is uh, the owner of Hodgman Rubber's son's home. And at this point, he began releasing property where all these stores and uh, boarding house could be built. And he still maintained his home in the background. This is uh, Hodgman's uh, house. This is Charles Hodgman. 
And uh, this was his house on Lake Avenue. The circular driveway, the Porter share, and the, the driveway opened up to Lake Avenue. It didn't go out to um, Main Street. The next intersection is pretty obvious. It's Columbus Avenue and Main Street. Here's our post office today. We're looking basically Northwest. We're looking opposite the uh, Depot Square. Uh, the white building in the background is Epstein's, which was the original post office. So we kept the post office in the heart of uh, Tuckahoe where it should be. Um, the new fresco market is just to the left. Here's the same group of stores where Kent Cleaners is and the store for rent. This is where the post office is today. And back then it was so great back in the 60s. We had Date Shopwell, a luncheonette. And I think one of the most popular stores in Tuckahoe are five and 10. You better uh, believe it. <laughs> that, everybody went to the five and 10. Um, it, it was, these were great times. Uh, before, before we had the uh, date shop well, we'll go back a little bit more in time. Uh, this I think is back into the fifties where date shop well was this, this was uh, the a &P. And what was interesting is we had the, a grand union and we had the a &P with a little cigar shop. So there was plenty of, uh, there was plenty of stores. Don't forget, we didn't have uh, transportation that we have today. So everything was located in Tuckahoe. We had everything from chicken markets, fish markets, um, meat markets, it, it was delis. You could find anything and everything in Tuckahoe within a few blocks. Nick, that's such a good point uh, that you're bringing up because it's true. Most of us had one car. Uh, most people walked to everything. They, they, they use carts or, yeah. so it was a lot of foot traffic in Tuckahoe then. Yeah. And this, this view that I'm showing is just to give people a flavor of what was around this intersection. And uh, now I'm gonna go back to the post office today. And what I'm gonna try to show is the stores and shops that went north, north and south on uh, Columbus Avenue, where the uh, post office is today. Now here we are in the 50s, the Village Market, Imperial Cleaners, this is where the post office is today. So we had shops, Imperial Cleaners changed many, many times. There was a pizzeria, uh, the Village Market for fresh produce. Eventually when we had Urban Renewal was a location where uh, Roma Pizza was located as a temporary location. Now we're looking up, up Columbus Avenue. We're looking north on Columbus Avenue. The brick building is where the post office is today. And you could see the series of stores, Longer Bodies Luncheonette. Another major uh, business in Tuckahoe was Pearl Furniture. We had Imperial uh, Bakery. And here, here is the original post office. And the Part I like the best about this picture is this apartment building is where I lived and there's my bedroom. So I can keep an eye on Tuckahoe. <laughs> That's great. Now we're going from the 1950s. We're gonna go back to 1907. This is the intersection of Columbus Avenue, which is to the right. And at that time, Columbus Avenue was called Breckenridge Street. This corner building where the post office is today was the Depot Square Hotel. 
and downstairs was the Frank Fritz restaurant. And in the back was a, a Hubble and Sons beer. And they had a beer garden in the back. Uh, if you think about it, we had a hotel here. I'm gonna show you another hotel. We had boarding houses, a lot of business in Tuckahoe. So there was a lot of traffic, people coming from New York City and they needed a place to stay. Um, oh, let me go back to the previous picture. If you go to the left, you'll see a building. Down below was a restaurant. There was a, a bar adjacent to that. And we're gonna go from this corner, we're gonna go right to where the railroad is. And that's gonna be coming up. We had a series of buildings that went from the corner of Columbus Avenue and Main Street to the left where the uh, power pole is. That's where the railroad tracks are. And at this time in the 1920s, the railroad has been lowered and the bridge was built. But if you notice, we have the Square Hotel at the corner of Columbus and Maine. We had the Depot Square Hotel. We had a boarding house. And uh, let me just squeeze one more thing in. In the parking lot where, uh, in the parking lot where Growlers is, in the mid to late 1800s, they had the Lakeville Hotel. Unfortunately, we don't, have, we don't have any pictures of that. But here was another um, high point in Tuckahoe, the Leader Department Store. So Tuckahoe was really built up. It, had, it used every inch of space and uh, it was great. Now, here they are back in the 30s. They're getting ready to start to demo the brick building. They kept the tall one to the left. All the other buildings got ripped down and rebuilt. And that's where they built um, shop, Date Shopwell and the A&P. And they built smaller stores. So we lost all that upper space. Um, here's, a, here's a fantastic picture. This is looking at the same group of stores in the background. Where I'm circling right now with the highlighter was the Square Hotel. This little peak that's sticking out is the railroad station that we have today. The building that I'm circling right now to the right on the screen is the Duesenberry Building. This picture is back in the 1920s. And what people have to understand is East Chester had very little. It was mostly farmland. All the offices for the town of East Chester were located in the upper floor of the Duesenberry building. The lower floor, we had everything from a pharmacy to a newspaper uh, printing press, barbershop, and many other uh, stores. But I just thought I'd show this. And I think it's in the late 20s, the Duesenberry building will eventually get ripped down. So Columbus Avenue can go right to Sagamore Road and the traffic could flow straight through. How, who are these people in the front? The people in the front, they're, this picture was for a race. Oh, okay. And these, and these four people are, running, they're gonna they're gonna run from the depot square in Tuckahoe to Pondfield Road in Bronzeville. Wow. And then they go up, I think, Midland Avenue. In fact, while it's on my mind, if you go into the Tuckahoe uh, not Facebook, uh, YouTube, there's a movie of this race where you could see these gentlemen running and, and a policeman on a motorcycle is following and they're being photographed throughout the whole race. And the race goes all the way around and then it, it ends off down in the, down in the Parkway Oval. 
I guess they didn't have shorts in those days. No, we're, we're lucky they had pants. Right. <laughs> uh, this picture I thought was a great picture to include. Here's the building that I said that was retained. And then when they started ripping buildings down and all that, but before they built those tall buildings, before the railroad was lowered, we had um, uh, the Rubley building. And I'm gonna show a better picture of that. But what's great on this postcard is notice the horse and carriage, the trolleys, and this, look at this ornate water uh, horse trough in the middle of the depot square. I think that's kind of cool. And also, if you look at the Duesenberry building, you'll see this was the post office at the time. So that's uh, pretty cool. This is showing the real original post office in downtown Tuckahoe. That's a great shot. Uh, it, it, I had to show this picture. It's just great. Now, we're gonna next, we're gonna look at the uh, Rubley building. And again, this is all done before they lowered the railroad tracks. Now here's the Rubley building, a good photograph. And he had a plumbing and hardware store, but William Rubley also became the second mayor of Tuckahoe. And he was also the inventor of the toggle bolt. Yeah. And back then it was called the Tuckahoe toggle bolt. What, yeah. a, what, a, fam what a famous village. Yeah. Uh, because the railroad wasn't lowered, the railroad was at grade level. And you could see on the extreme left, the railroad tracks, a gatehouse, and here's the gate. So it would stop the traffic and the train could go by. Mm -hmm. just, just fabulous pictures from the Tuckahoe archives. Phil and Alice uh, did a fabulous job getting the, all these pictures and organizing it. And uh, now, now- Absolutely. Thanks to the computer, we could put all this together and uh, it, it, makes, it makes this work a little easier. So Nick, oh, yes. So Nick, on that last picture, Rubley Hardware was that was that previously was that Cornell's after? No, no, no. This is on this is on Main Street. Oh, okay. Right next to right next, just north of uh, Main Street. This is where Dage was, right? Right, it was where Dage Shopwell was. The, oh, same, okay. the same location. When this got ripped down, they put the foundations. They they did all of this simultaneously. When they built Date Shopwell, they had to excavate, build a basement for Date Shopwell. And also it was a retaining wall for the railroad tracks. So a lot of work went on at this time. I remember my father-in-law, John Fick Sr talking about the Rubley, uh, you know, the toggle bolt way back. You yeah. know, for, for, for a, a little village, we had the largest rubber manufacturing company in the East Coast. We were the marble capital of the world. Right. We had pharmaceutical companies. There were three or four pharmaceutical companies in Tuckahoe, throughout Tuckahoe. We had soda manufacturing plants. We, we had so much in this small little village. It's, it's incredible. Now, we're gonna go to uh, Tuckahoe Plaza now. This is at the intersection of Main Street and Columbus Avenue. I think everybody that's living in Tuckahoe right now recognizes this location. In the background, you could see Main Street School and uh, now today's um, uh, town hall, village hall. Now we're, we're gonna go back a few years. We're gonna go back into the 1950s from this picture. And generally where this gentleman is walking on the screen right now is where the, the stores used to be. Here we go. 
back in the, this picture is back in the 50s. You could see Bruno Drugs, Hinman Shoe Store. We had a camera shop, patio, hairdressers. Um, over here, I think it was a delicatessen, but we had offices. We had people renting. So there were apartments above it. Uh, Tucko was pretty cool. I remember walking by here, going to Main Street School as a child. This is another picture. All these stores that I'm circling right now with the highlighter are all in the uh, plaza. They're all, they're all located there. And you could see the stores changed obviously over the years, uh, volunteer beef, dry goods, uh, uh, I think we had an Army and Navy store back then. And where these people are standing at the corner is where Bruno Drugs gets built. And it's also the intersection with Columbus Avenue. I tried to show a lot of views of this because it's just such an iconic part of downtown Tuckahoe back then. Here we are in the 1920s. Here's where the same thing, these stores are all located where the Tuckahoe Plaza is located today. And this was uh, a shoe store. These were just different businesses, but the great part of this photo is it's looking east on Main Street. We're looking up Main Street and you see a tractor in the center of the screen and this construction site, they're building the Masonic Temple at this time. Now Main Street School, you could just see the peak of the roof, but Main Street School was built in 1906. The Masonic Temple was built in 1922. So I'm assuming that this picture is 1920s. And at this time, you could see the trolley. The trolleys, the trolleys at this time, they came from Yonkers. They went up Main Street, they went up to Waverly Square and Waverly Square, they can get off the trolley and get on another trolley with a transfer and be taken to White Plains, Mount Vernon or New Rochelle. I remember Main Street, my husband's grandfather who was born in Germany had a bakery and his his John's father, when he was younger, used to make deliveries early in the morning of the breads and things with a horse and buggy. Well, I, got, I, got, I have great pictures, not in this um, uh, program, but this is the first of a series of programs. I'm gonna get up to that intersection. I think it was called Tuckahoe Bakery. And yeah, I don't remember, but it was right on Main Street. I, I think I know where it is and I could show that. Um, but here we are, this is, we're going back to the building that would become Bruno Drugs. What's interesting with this picture is if you look to the extreme left, the smaller building, the first is a yard with a fence. Then there's a smaller building. This was a barn for the horses for the Tuckahoe Hose Company. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show pictures of that in a second, but this is on Columbus Avenue. Here's an iconic picture of Tuckahoe. Here's Main Street looking west. Here's the trolley coming from Yonkers with a horse and carriage. Before the Bentley building was built, here's the Fisher building. And if you look at the building in the center with the turret roof, that, that building there was the Depot Square Hotel and it was right at the intersection with Columbus Avenue. Uh, this is just such a beautiful picture. I love the awnings, the air conditioning at the times. Uh, just, just a great picture. Here's another view now of Tuckahoe Plaza, but now I'm gonna look at the stores that were adjacent to Columbus Avenue. That last group were along um, Main Street. This will be all along 
um, Columbus Avenue. This building was right at the corner of Main Street and Columbus Avenue. This was Bruno Drugs. But then you could look up on the east side of Columbus Avenue. And this picture is primarily showing all of Tuckahoe Plaza. Tuckahoe Plaza extended all the way to this intersection in the lower left. That's Underhill Street. Here's the Tuckahoe Bowling Alleys, the original Tuckahoe Paint and Glass, Art Cleaners. And here we are with a barber, barber shop. The barber shop pole that's shown in this picture is in the Village Hall today. If you went upstairs to the History Committee, you can see this uh, barber, barber pole. So we got little remnants of uh, the past. Um, okay, this was a little out of order. This is still where, um, this is at the intersection of Columbus and Maine. And uh, this was just such a great picture. Uh, and here we are with another real estate and insurance company. So there were quite a few. I think Tuckahoe was booming at the time with all that industry. Back a few pictures ago, I told you about the short fence. Here's the barn for the Tuckahoe Hose Company. This building is number one hose company in Tuckahoe. This building held the apparatus the barn obviously held the horses and the horses had a yard that they can go out to. I, I just think that's beautiful. Uh, the picture is 1910. Here's another clear picture. It shows number one Tuckahoe Hose Company and we had a, an Italian grocery store. All these buildings are in the plaza today. Now I'm going down Columbus Avenue. Here's Underhill Street on the left, Columbus Avenue going to the right. This is all part of the uh, Tuckahoe Plaza, the way it looks today. Now we're gonna do the same intersection and we're gonna go back about 70 years. And here we are in the 1950s. Tuckahoe Bowling Center London blinds, Nunzio's TV and radio repair. Um, this was all part of part of life back then. Down in the bottom of this building on Underhill Street was a dress shop. So there were a lot of sewing machines in there and a lot of people uh, doing their doing their job. Here's another picture showing the Bowling Alley. You could see Underhill Street in the lower left and the series of stores. Here's Tuckahoe Paint and Glass when Al Cowers family just started the business. And uh, this, this is just such a great picture. Now we're gonna go back. Wonderful. We're going to go back now about another 50 years. Look carefully at the bowling center. This building here later becomes the bowling center. And the building was the Lyceum building. The Lyceum building at one time was the first school in Tuckahoe. And it was really just for affluent families. Then we had a school on Jefferson Street. And right after the Jefferson School got going, Main Street School got built. But the very, very important part of the uh, Lyceum building was it served so many purposes. Um, 
It was used to show silent movies before the Lyric Theater was built. They had a stage with stage shows. They sponsored dances in the Lyric, in the uh, uh, Lyceum building. And Shiloh Baptist Church on uh, Marbledale Road, it started on Columbus Avenue. And then the Shiloh Baptist held services in this building. And then they moved, I think, to Washington Street and then to their present location. What's also interesting, I just found that out, this back area on Underhill Street, before it became the dress shop and a bowling alley upstairs, this lower section was a leather tanning factory. Here we are with our horse and carriage, uh, love it. Now the, the Lyceum building is on the left and here we are with August shape horseshoeing and general jobbing. So he actually took care of horses, shoot horses here, right on Columbus Avenue, right, right where our mall is today. And it, it's really interesting to see the evolution of uh, downtown Tuckahoe. This picture is looking from the intersection of Underhill Street and Columbus Avenue. It, to the extreme left, the brick, the, port, the portion of brick building that's shown is Epstein's or the former, uh, the original uh, post office on Columbus Avenue. The parking lot is part of uh, Tuckahoe Paint and Glass. And I saved this picture because now we could go. Um, let's go back about 70 years again. Here's that same corner, the Tuckahoe Post Office. And here's 35 Columbus. Um, so many, so many families that we know. I think the Gallows, Betty Gallo lived down here. Uh, the DeSantis's lived on this floor. Uh, the shops downstairs, this was Luigi Salerno's luncheonette. Uh, Herbie Reese's television and sound systems, a penny candy store. There was so much at this location. And then I lived upstairs in the back and I used to watch the uh, mail trucks go down the alleyway to the back. Just to the right of this building. Were you born and raised in Tucker? Yes. Oh. I, I started on uh, the projects on Washington Street. Then when I was real young, we moved to 35 Columbus. And I stayed here until uh, I went to college. Oh, good. Now here's 35 Columbus on the left-hand side. And if you look to the right, here's Epstein's original store. You can go in uh, on the right. And this was the ladies section. Then you have a transition. And then you can go into the men's section and come out. But this was the original Epstein's. And I think this picture is 1950s. And don't forget the bubble gum from Milton and the big, and the big books that they had for you, you, you could charge it. You could just go in. My mother would say, oh, just go and put it on the day. Those big books, everybody would just, you know, go in and write it in and, and you just got people, sent your bill. It was, it was yeah. so wonderful. People were, people were so honest back then that, um, I know Milton and Morris did not go broke. People paid their bills and yes. they weren't they weren't harassed. It, it, everybody was family in Tuckahoe back then. Yeah, everybody nice. went to Epstein's. Absolutely yeah. everybody went to Epstein's. That's where you got your children's clothes. That's right. Yeah, that's where we, we got all our clothes. Um, now I'm just gonna go to another intersection. Now, to the extreme right, this is Underhill Street. The uh, Tuckahoe Mall is 
on the right. Here's the parking lot at Columbus Avenue and Underhill Street. This is the parking lot that's there today. Back in the 1950s, this was the Clark Building. And what we used to see a lot of were moving trucks in this parking lot. This picture doesn't show it, but the Clark family uh, were movers back then. And uh, they, were, they, were, they were an awesome family. They were, they were pioneers. They had their own business. Um, on the extreme right, you could see a piece of Underhill and the parking lot for Main Street School. This is just another view at a Clark building. Um, this is going up Underhill Street. And oh, come on. This picture was back in the 20s. The building that I grew up in was not built yet. Here's the Lyceum building. This is Underhill Street. Here's the railroad tracks. So we're looking over the railroad tracks from the power building, which is now Growlers. And you can see the Clark building. We got a picture where there, the porch went totally around the building, which I thought was pretty, pretty cool. And we'll do a little bit, more. let's see. Okay, here we are looking north on Columbus Avenue. If you look to the left, you'll see the uh, Tuckahoe uh, Community Center and the Tuckahoe Library. You'll see the Tower Club on the right and Marble Hall straight up the middle. And the library. The library is right over here. I'm highlighting it now and the Community Center. And now we're going to go from basically 2020, we're going to go back 70 years. Here's what Tuckahoe looked like back then. We had apartment building after apartment building. And everybody in these buildings, I think everybody knew everybody. If you crossed the street without looking, somebody yell at you and say they're going to talk to your mama. Uh, get in trouble. Here's Master Bruno's building. This was uh, meat market. Here's Caccioli's uh, Delicatessen, Flying A service station. Uh, this, was, this was just Tuckahoe the way I grew up and uh, it, it's missed. It's, uh, you, we couldn't keep Tuckahoe. The buildings were much older than people would realize. A lot of these buildings were from the 1800s and they've been modified, but we don't know if they met code, electric code, plumbing code, building codes. Uh, I know living adjacent to the railroad, which was on the extreme left of this picture, uh, when, the, when the freight train went by, the building shook. <laughs> True. Nick, I wanted to ask, was, was there a bakery down there on this side, on the left side? On the left side no on the right side we had alberta's bakery oh it was on the right side okay because i know my grandmother used to send uh my aunt down with a wagon full of bread to be baked yeah and they and they also made they also had ovens for people to bring their dough and bake much, far, much further down columbus avenue if you went past um the flying a station uh, there was a location where they made the breads. And if you, if, if everybody that's listening right now, if you go on the Tuckahoe History Committee Facebook site and you scroll through it, we have a whole article written with pictures, dates, names, 
of those ovens that we use to bake the bread for people. There's a, a wealth of history in our Facebook site. And, uh, you know, I, I thank, I thank our uh, super Facebook person and historian, uh, uh, Marge Pellegrino. Uh, it's, um, it's really, it's still a work in progress, but there's a tremendous amount of history and Marge said she's putting up a memoir about those ovens tomorrow. I think that might've been the one written by my aunt, by Rob's mother. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, um, it's, yes a, it's, it's, it's really awesome. If anybody hasn't gone on Facebook and looked at the Tuckahoe History site, you're missing a lot. We have probably a, 150 articles. We have about 150,000 views, and there's tons of pictures um, and memories in that uh, post. I have to tell my son, John the Third, John Fix the Third, because I'm not on Facebook, but uh, he is. So I'll have to. Tomorrow is his birthday, so he's not watching this tonight because they're going out celebrating tonight. Very good. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, one more interesting thing with the picture that's on the screen. Here's something that doesn't exist anymore to Columbus Avenue. We had Maynard Street. Maynard Street, there was even a book written about Maynard Street and Columbus Avenue. I think it was called uh, Columbus and Main, uh, Maynard and Columbus. Uh, it's the story of from a person that lived there and can sh and shared a lot of uh, experiences and what life was like. Um, just such a great village to live in. And let's see, Lainey, how do we stand time-wise right now? Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, oh. I know you have a, you have a little bit more to share. Go right ahead. No, I think I think I think I think that's as far as I could really go now. I I have stuff that's still a work in progress. So I'm gonna hold on that. I think my mother-in-law grew up on Maynard Street. John's mother, my husband's mother. I'm not sure. She was, her name, maiden name was Brundage. So, wow. Um, well, yeah. well, that's where my father was born. And um, it's oh. true. Most people don't, and family still lives on uh, Maynard in the same house. Um, our two brothers, mar my father's father and his brother married two sisters. So uh, very unique situation. And um, uh, so it's old Tuckahoe, you know, all that wonderful history. Yeah. And like Nick says, um, the, the Facebook page has, now the, the Facebook group page, no. Marge, what is a specific Facebook page that they should look for? Let's wait for her to type in the chat, just so it's easy to find. Okay. Well, well we're waiting for Marge to get on. Uh, oh, Tuckahoke, Tuckahoke Community oh, Committee. Oh, okay. Okay, so search that on Facebook. Tuckahoe Community Committee, okay. Oh, Tuckahoe History Committee. Okay, it is under yeah. Tuckahoe History Committee. Uh -oh. Okay, History. I, I'm on it, but I, I always wanna make sure I have the giving the right name for when I'm looking at it. <laughs> Um, well, this has been wonderful, Nick, really. I, I was born and raised from Irish parents who were born in Ireland, in Manhattan. So I didn't come here until 1958 when I married John Fix. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of a late comer, but I love history. And uh, I think I'm really sad that my husband, you know, because he has dementia now. So... But my son would definitely, definitely enjoy this. It's wonderful, Mary. So fun. glad you could be here. Anybody else have any any questions for Nick? Chime I just want, wanted to say that I read the book Columbus and Maynard last summer. I mm -hmm. um, was born and raised in East Chester. And I live in College Station, Texas now, which is home to Texas A&M University. I've been in Texas 40 plus years. Wow. But, um, a mutual friend of mine that uh, didn't get to know her in, until I moved to College Station several years ago, 
Um, she's also from East Chester, and her cousin is the one who wrote the book um, oh, of yeah, Columbus and Maynard. I believe his last name is Mary Annie, but I yes. cannot remember his first name. And I thoroughly enjoyed the book because I, even though I'm a little bit younger than I think than he was, um, the, uh, my my father, you know, my parents were probably the same age as his family, and it was just a just a lovely story of his growing up in Tuckahoe, and I loved it. I think well, it was I, hope, I hope you I hope you enjoyed Annie. these pictures. Well, I I would be very interested in reading. It. So it's at Tuckahoe Library. That's good to know. I, can't, I just can't remember his first name, but his last name, I believe, is Mary his name, Annie. His name was Albert. I think yeah, Albert. Yeah, Mary Annie. Yeah. yeah. Mary Annie is the last name, and we have the book at the library. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great presentation, <laughs> Nick. Yeah, wonderful. So this Most was enjoyable. Good. Thank Again, you so much. The next, the next uh, program will come in the near future. And I hope to have a lot, I, I do have a lot more intersections where you could see the change over time. And some of them are really uh, great up at Midland and going on to uh, Marbledale Road. Uh, a, lot, a lot of great, a lot of great pictures. And uh, I hope everybody's enjoying the uh, program. Thank you, I hope so. Definitely. Bye now. Thank, thank you, Nick. It was great. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nick. All righty.